This is how to get a haircut underwater. 1. The first thing you need to do is to get a friend who is a hairdresser and also willing to cut your hair underwater. Luckily I have a friend who owns a chain of hair saloons called H2 in Trondheim and he offered me to borrow his son Eben who is a professional barber and a hairdresser. If you don't have a friend who owns a chain of hair saloons you could ask your mom or any random stranger to cut your hair underwater and just deal with the results. Two. Ideally you should get two small diving tanks, one for you and one for the hairdresser. I already had one 1.1 liter 300 bar scuba tank. The diving tank cost almost $700, so getting another one would make it a very expensive haircut. So I decided to go with a second much cheaper but equally good option. Let him use the diving tank since he was gonna do a lot of work and I was just gonna sit there and chill so I could just take a deep breath and hold it in. Chilling doesn't take that much oxygen, especially if you're not even breathing. 3. Most people naturally float up when they have full lungs, so we needed to have weight belts on. Luckily I had two weight belts, so that problem was solved. Though one of the problems I ran into was that I put the weights too far on my back, so I had to use my exceptional abs to hold me from falling off the chair. That again made me use more oxygen. Not ideal. So I don't recommend doing that. It's better to just put the weights on your lap. 4. Since cutting hair underwater obviously would make the pool dirty with a lot of hair floating around, we needed to do it when a pool would be closed long enough that the filters had time to clean the pool before the people came to swim. We did this in 2020, so luckily we had a worldwide situation making everyone wear face masks and every public fun place like the pools closed. So that was solved. 5. We needed a chair to sit on. The pool had that, so we're good to go. Eben insisted on jumping from the diving tower to start off the haircut, because he said work should be fun. To make sure Eben had good sight underwater and didn't cut my hair wrong, or worse, cut my ear instead of my hair, I made sure to put some soap in his diving mask to prevent it from fogging. The most frustrating and stressing thing was that I had no idea what he was actually doing, since we did not have a mirror underwater, and since I was not wearing a diving mask, it wouldn't have helped since I didn't see much anyway. I know what some of you might be thinking. I don't care how to get my hair cut underwater. I just want to know why would anyone want to get a hair cut underwater. I usually work as a magician and since gathering people was illegal after March 2020, I was out of work and many other businesses had to close down like public pools and hair saloons. 1st of April was coming up and we thought it would be fun if we did an April Fool's prank that H2 Hair Salons and Peerbada the pool did a collaboration and had been given an exception from the rules to offer haircuts to people underwater since the chlorine disinfected so well. The prank was pretty successful, it got a lot of press and it got over 15 million views on social media in total. If you look at my stomach now, you can see that it looks like I'm trying to flex and show off my abs. But what is actually happening is when you hold your breath for a while, CO2 builds up in the body and it uh, makes your abs and diaphragm contract to try to make you breathe. It's not dangerous, but it can be a bit uncomfortable. But then again, it does show off my abs better. The 1.1 liter tank doesn't fit that much air, so after about 6 minutes we had to finish because the diving tank was empty and I also thought it would feel very nice to breathe a bit again. The haircut didn't turn out that bad. I'm pretty happy with it for being the first time we did an underwater haircut. Hope you liked this video and let me know in the comments what other videos you would like me to make.